Hi, this is Bill Gaswich, and today I want to talk to you about the Blazor Project Structure, Part 1. The agenda for today will be the pre-architecture. just want to sh walk you through some of the changes that I made in support of the work that we're going to be doing as we transition the Blazor server application to a Blazor WebAssembly application. And so the first step in that will be to split the DTO and the server service into separate projects. So let's get started. Here we are in Visual Studio. We're in the Blazor app from scratch project. And I want to walk through a couple of changes I made to make the migration from a single project to multi-project a little bit more meaningful. So first let's run it to see what we did. I got rid of the counter component or the counter tab here and left the person tab. So clicking on the person tab, you see I have a drop down that has multiple people in it. When I choose a certain person, the first name, last name, and gender change for relative to that. So Betty Rubble is a female, Wilma Flintstone, female, Wilma Flintstone, and Fred Flintstone is a male. So that's the big change. I just wanted to show how we can populate multiple people and then go back to the server and pull in just one. And that's why I pulled in the gender was just to pull back one more piece of information. So let's talk about the changes that we made in the code. First, in the person service, I added in a way to populate the DTOs with multiple people. Here they are. And then I added in a method get persons that returns all of the people and then another method called get person that accepts an ID and returns just that single person. So that is the work there. Now we let's go to the uh, code for the person razor component. Here we define a my persons which is a list of person DTO and an individual person that's person DTO. I inject the service that I just mentioned um, and we um, reference that here. And then on the initialize of this, I populate my persons and my person based on a call to that service. And then on person select, I pull in the ID of the specific person that was selected, and then I make a call just to get the DTO relative to that. So that is the code behind the person component. Now let's go to the person. And I have the code here that starts setting up the select, and on change it calls the on person select that we just reviewed. It's populating, it's going through the my persons um, list and populating the options within the list box with a value of ID. And then we have these this thing over here, which I'll talk about, which is a, this is a razor component. I found that when I was starting to type the, how I wanted to show the first name, I was repeating the uh, bootstrap code and I said, there's got to be a better way. So I thought, hey, let's create a razor component and show that as well. So this is the name of a component, and it's passing in a field label parameter, and here are the values that I'm passing in, and it passes in a field value, and these are the values I'm passing in. So now where did I f define this? Well, I like to define components in their own separate folder. So I created a components folder. If it's not a page that you navigate to, if it's just a component that gets embedded in just like field label is here, I created a, a components folder, and then here's the uh, Razor component. And since this was a pretty small uh, component, I kept the code and the HTML in the same file. Here's the bootstrap. It defines a row, puts the label in the first two columns, puts the value in the next four, and it accepts a parameter of field label and field value. And that's the code here and the component. Now the one thing to consider is because it's now in components, we needed to update the imports razor file just to add that as a reference so that the person component could find the field label component because I didn't keep it in the same folder pages. But that's all you need to do is just add the reference in here. 
So that's the changes I made. Now let's talk about moving this from a single project, the Blazor app from scratch project, into multiple projects. And the first thing we're going to do today is keep the structure. We're not going to define the API yet, but we're going to keep the structure the same. We're just going to split out the DTO and the service. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and add in the Blazor app from scratch DTO project. First, we right click on the solution. We choose add new project. And let's look for, search for a class library. Make sure that it's a .NET standard C sharp library. Click on next. And we'll call this Blazor app from scratch dot DTO. Create it. Once it's created, we want to make sure that it is a target framework .NET standard 2.0. We right click on the project, click on properties, and we have .NET standard. So that's good. We'll close that. We'll close that. We don't need class one, so we'll go ahead and delete that. There we go. And so now what we want to do is let's just copy the person DTO down into the project. We could create a separate folder, but for now I'm just going to copy it down. And then as part of that, we no longer need it up here in the Blazor app from scratch project. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go in here because there's a couple of things we have to do. The first is just to make sure that the namespace is correct, which it is. And then the next thing we want to do is notice that we don't have that reference within this project. So let's do a quick look and it says install a package. Yes, find and install. Now this is some of the reasons why it makes sense to do this at the very beginning as opposed to doing it after you've started to create it, because some of the things that we're doing, uh, you wouldn't have to do if you just created this um, this way at the beginning. OK, so that's that. And then the next thing we want to do is move the services down to um, create a separate project for that. So let's right click. Let's add again a new project. We'll add class library, class library, .NET standard C sharp. Next, we'll call this Blazor app from scratch dot server dot bl. Now you'd like to use bl for business logic. We'll go ahead and delete the class one again. We'll go ahead and right click and check to make sure it's a .NET standard 2.0. It is. And then we will drag the services folder down into the new project. And Let's just verify everything came through OK. This is Blazor app from scratch dot services dot dot server dot bl is a namespace. And here is the dot net, the DTO. Now, the reason we're getting this, even though that's correct, is the there needs to be a reference from the server to the um, to the DTO. So in dependencies, right click, add a reference, and add the reference to the DTO there. Okay, and once you do that, you've got everything kind of set up. Now we have this red squiggly under I person service, and that's because that's in a different namespace right now. We just have to go over here and change this to server.bl. Once we do that, we go back to person service and that's all resolved. So those are all resolved now. Now let's go into the persons so we can get rid of the person service 
and the services folder down here. So let's get rid of that. And what we'll do is let's go into the person razor. That looks okay. But let's go here and see we've got all of these references that are off. And there's two reasons for that. First, we have Blazor app from scratch DTO. We need to reference that. And this has cert.services, which is where it used to be. We now change that to server.bl. So we update that. That doesn't fix it yet because what we need to do is we need to reference those two projects from within the Blazor app from scratch project. So we right click on dependencies under Blazor app from scratch and we add a reference and we want to reference both of these and we'll say OK. And everything here now resolves. So we should be able to now run this and see the same result. Oops, there's an error. You forgot one other spot. Yes. Okay. Sorry. In the startup, we needed to change the reference here to be server.bl. That changes that. Now we run it. And we will see person populates Barney Rebel. Betty Rebel. Everything works. Great. So in the next video, we'll start adding in the API and the client service that will call that API. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. And as always, please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions or comments. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.